Parents have a God-given duty to protect their children. This rests on both parents. Our Lord teaches us in St. Matthew's Gospel that it would be better for us to die rather than place a stumbling block in the way of one of his little children, or worse, cause him to fall into sin. Parents in particular are charged to protect the souls of their children from sin, above all sins of impurity. To keep them from evil companions and to correct sins and faults immediately is essential to ensure that the children God has blessed them with remain innocent. It is a serious mortal sin to neglect this duty. Many parents, in an effort to assist their children on a path of virtue and give them wholesome recreation, turn to the Girl Scouts of America. After all, the Girl Scout motto is love of God and country, isn't it? 2012 marked the centennial anniversary of the Girl Scouts of the United States. Many are not aware that the Girl Scouts of the United States is no longer the same organization that for decades had brought young girls together to follow the Girl Scout laws by building skills in order to develop character and values. You must be forewarned that the information provided in this video is at times uncomfortable and sexually explicit. This is not appropriate for children to watch or listen to. All adults should be appalled by the following expose of the partnerships, practices, and educational materials used by the Girl Scouts. Many of you have fond memories of your time in the Girl Scouts. Several of the changes to be discussed have not yet seeped down to every council and troop, and your family may be part of a troop that is unaware of or not yet affected by these developments. However, the evidence presented in this video will show that Girl Scout materials and programs are increasingly connecting girls to inappropriate and controversial issues and activities that contradict the values of many Girl Scout families. It may be difficult to separate your fondness for the Girl Scouts from the bigger picture of the sinful downfall of the Girl Scout organization. Most parents of current Girl Scouts have no idea of the moral upheaval their daughters will be exposed to as they move up through the ranks in the Girl Scout program. Girl Scout programs range from kindergarten through 12th grade. Nor are the parents aware that the donations, merchandise, cookies, purchase, and dues that they pay to the Girl Scouts are funding programs and activities that are contrary to traditional family values and support a culture of death. For instance, every girl who pays her annual $25 membership to her Girl Scout troop is made a member of WAGS, World Association of Girls Guides and Girl Scouts. This radical group promotes and advocates a campaign for sexual and reproductive health services, including emergency contraception in order to avoid unintended pregnancies, and accessible, affordable abortions for children as stated on their website. WAGS openly partners with International Planned Parenthood Federation. Girl Scouts USA is WAGS' single largest organizational fundraiser. The Girl Scouts headquarters continue to mislead the public by repeatedly insisting they do not partner with or have a relationship with Planned Parenthood or any organizations which promote abortion. Comprehensive sexuality education or lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender rights. This is a blatant lie. Girl Scouts USA pushes these liberal agendas at their conventions, on their website, and in the curriculum necessary for girls to receive their merit badges. The Girl Scouts USA is ripping away innocence and morals from our daughters, granddaughters, nieces, and the future generations of women. As Catholics and as parents, we must take a stand and wage a war against this deception. Being informed is the first step in order to see past the facade of the cute uniforms and tag-along cookies. The Girl Scouts USA has an agenda. Do not be naive to think that because they print publications stating they have no policy on sex education or orientation, transgender inclusion, abortion, birth control, and politics, that this is the truth. Look at what they do and who they hold up as role models to our young girls. There is no way of denying the reality of the Girl Scouts USA's actions, public affiliations, and events with Planned Parenthood, the United Nations, and various radical LGBT activists. In no way can a Catholic support this organization. Have the Girl Scouts always had an agenda? The Girl Scouts of America was founded on March 12, 1912 by Juliet Gordon Lowe. Mrs. Lowe was an American visitor in England when the Boy Scout movement was founded. She was a personal friend of the father of scouting, Robert Baden Powell. The Boy Scouts proved to be so attractive and well adapted to all youth that limiting it to boys alone would be wasting a great opportunity. The sister organization known in England as the Girls' Guides quickly followed and won equal success. Juliet realized the tremendous future of the same movement for America, and with the active and friendly cooperation of the Baden-Powells, she founded the Girl Guides in America, 
enrolling the first patrols in Savannah, Georgia, in March of 1912. She dreamed of giving the United States something for all the girls. She assembled 18 girls from Savannah, Georgia, for a local Girl Scout meeting. Juliet believed that all girls should be given the opportunity to develop physically, mentally, and spiritually, with the goal of bringing girls out of home environments and into community service and the open air. Girl Scouts hiked, played sports, went on camping trips, learned how to tell time by the stars, and studied first aid. In 1915, the national headquarters were established in Washington, D.C., and the name was officially changed to Girl Scouts of the United States. The founding laws of the Girl Scouts were to ensure that each Scout had honor. A Girl Scout's honor is to be trusted, loyal, useful, to help others, a friend to all, and a sister to every other Girl Scout courteous, a friend to animals, obey orders, be cheerful, thrifty, and to be pure in thought, word, and deed. The founding principles were to help girls become better women. Girl Scouts were charged to be womanly, strong, handy, prepared, and observant, and to be good mothers. The idea that women are supposed to be the same as or better than men is not why Juliet Lowe brought the Girl Scouts to fruition in America. Being a strong woman is not the same as being a radical feminist. The goal was to help girls reach their full potential in order to do a good turn every day. By each girl learning the value of hard work and dedication and performing good deeds for others as often as possible, they would make this world a more peaceful and happy place. Modern-day biographies of Juliette Lowe paint a picture of a trailblazer who paved the way for feminists of today. The earlier Girl Scout manuals of 1913 to 1957 and her own accounts paint a different picture of a woman seeking to build a strong foundation of girls with good character for future generations to come. Is this the same Girl Scouts of the United States that exist today? The simple answer is no. Gone are the days of instilling morals and self-reliance in young girls while camping, making toys, and crocheting. The Girl Scouts are now promoting and advancing all aspects of radical liberal feminism. Since the women's movement, which historians typically affirm began in 1963, the liberal agenda has completely made its way into the Girl Scouts of the United States, through individual women, board members, and finally into the Girl Scout organization as a whole. In 1967, UNICEF, the United Nations Children Fund, made public the partnership between WAGS and International Planned Parenthood Federation in the area of children and youth planning and development for the first time. In 1970, Betty Friedan, who many consider to be the founding mother of the modern women's movement, a radical feminist activist, co-founder of NOW, the National Organization of Women, and NARAL, National Abortion and Reproductive Rights Action League, was asked to join the National Board of Girl Scouts of the United States in order to get her advice on how they could better help girls to break through the sex role stereotypes toward fully equal participation in society and partnership in the home. She stayed on for 12 years until 1982. Frieden's election to the board of directors signaled a drastic departure from the Girl Scouts of the United States' purpose and exposed the ideological split between their roots in traditional religious and civil values and their radical and liberal messages. During Betty Frieden's time and under her guidance, the word loyalty was dropped from the Girl Scout oath in 1972, replacing it with, I will do my best to be honest and fair. It did not take long for this radical mindset to infiltrate into the badge program. In 1974, the Girl Scouts introduced a badge, To Be a Woman, which suggested activities for learning about women's bodies, the processes of reproduction, and birth control, and introduced new programs like Woman and Her Environment, which experimented with consciousness-raising sessions for senior scouts on birth control, pregnancy, and the medical procedure of abortion. The immediate push for birth control and abortions is a sure sign that this movement was not from God. This action, however, came a little too abruptly for those who still cared about their souls and those of their daughters. The Archdiocese of Philadelphia immediately pulled their sponsorship of 334 troops in its parishes. Due to the courage of these Catholics, the To Be a Woman program was subsequently dropped, and the young girls were protected from this agenda at least for a short time. In addition to protecting their children from bad example and companions, parents have a grave obligation to do whatever is necessary to protect their children from sex education, either in schools or in extracurricular activities, like the Girl Scouts. Formal sex education is always immodest and a temptation to sin. The facts of sex should be given carefully and with great emphasis on God and the beauty and sacredness of sex. Answers to questions about the facts of life should be correct, but always suited to the age and mental development of the child. Parents should encourage the confidence of their children so that the children will come to them for information. The Girl Scouts have a very different opinion of sex education, promoting explicit instructions and parental exclusion. 
Be it resolved, sex education will be a program component of the Girl Scouts. This is the mindset of the next liberal Girl Scout program, which debuted in 1989. The program was titled Decisions for Your Life, Preventing Teenage Pregnancy. It included a troop leader manual, community resource consultants, and teen pregnancy prevention overnight retreat for Scouts ages 12 to 17. These community resource consultants were Planned Parenthood representatives. The retreat consisted of four workshops, including relationships, the facts of life, who am I, and responsible sexual behavior part one and part two. The scouts were shown videos, wore an empathy belly pregnancy stimulator, and participated in discussions and activities. Surveys were taken from these retreats, and the Girl Scouts stated that they felt more comfortable about themselves and talking about human sexuality in an all-girl environment that is open and non-judgmental. The retreats were very informative and helpful with life experiences, clearing up a lot of misunderstandings. Girls earned a Decisions for Your Life badge for participating in activities relating to teen pregnancy, including premarital sex, birth control, and abortion. This is not a retreat or a program that aids all sister Girl Scouts to be pure in thought, word, and deed, which was one of the founding laws for each Scout. Instead, the Girl Scouts of the USA spent a great deal of money, resources, and time indoctrinating the youth of the 80s, 90s, and today in the use of birth control and abortions to solve the problem of pregnancy. My Duty to God and My Country since its inception, the Girl Scouts of the United States has been described simply as an organization that taught America's daughters to do their duty to God and country. The trend in the modern Girl Scouts USA philosophy is heavily turned towards atheism. On October 23, 1993, the Girl Scout Board voted 1,560 to 375 to permit individuals to remove or substitute another word or phrase for God in the Girl Scout Promise. When reciting the Girl Scout promise, it is okay to replace the word God with whatever word your spiritual beliefs dictate. Keep in mind that the Boy Scouts, the organization Juliet Lowe mirrored the Girl Scouts after, have been sued over keeping God's name obligatory in their oath. Girl Scout President B. LaRue Orulian made an official statement that the change was a very strong statement that Girl Scouts continue to be on the cutting edge and this is a continuing effort to show that we have strength and diversity and that we are an inclusive organization. The Girl Scouts are abandoning their original foundation on biblical principles consisting of definite moral rights and wrongs. The girls are taught in their handbooks, you can rarely state that something is definitely right or definitely wrong. The girls are taught in their handbooks, you can rarely state that something is definitely right or wrong. The Brownie Handbook of 1993 for girls ages 6 to 8 explains to them there is no right way to live, look, talk, dress, eat, or act. Girls, especially at such a young age, need a moral compass in order to know how to honor God and the teachings of His Church. This policy led to many Catholic families joining or forming an alternate organization such as the Little Flowers Girls Club. These groups were founded because outraged parents needed to ensure a wholesome program for their daughters, a program that does not constantly teach young girls that right and wrong, that sin, no longer exists. Partnership with Planned Parenthood the adage of don't believe everything you read could not be truer regarding the above statements. There is an example after example of how untrue these claims from the Girl Scouts are. This statement is a media ploy attempting to dismiss as absurd the growing pro-life boycott on Girl Scouts and the exodus of Christian families from the Girl Scout organization. Unfortunately, it worked. Most people stop there because Girl Scouts publicly state they do not have an affiliation with Planned Parenthood. Let us recall the words of March 5, 2004, of the then CEO of the Girl Scouts, Kathy Cloninger, publicly stated on the Today Show, Girl Scouts is the largest voice for and advocate for girls across the country, knowing that girls grow up with very complex issues facing them, and so we do across the country, tackle the issues of human sexuality and body image and all the things that girls are facing. And we partner with many organizations. We have relationships with our church communities, with YWCAs, and with Planned Parenthood organizations across the country to bring information-based sex education programs to the girls. Abby Johnson is a former Planned Parenthood clinic director who worked with Planned Parenthood for eight years. After seeing an ultrasound-guided abortion, Abby left the abortion industry and is now a respected pro-life advocate. As author of the book Unplanned, she speaks out against... Girl Scout USA and their partnership with Planned Parenthood. She recalls the first time she saw a Girl Scout logo on a Planned Parenthood pamphlet. Nobody loves brochures more than Planned Parenthood. I mean, they have a brochure for everything. I will never forget the first time I saw a Girl Scouts of America logo on the back of one of our pamphlets. 
We had just gotten a new shipment of life-changing brochures in the mail. I flipped them over, and there it was. Girl Scouts of America. Surely this was a brochure about being sexually abstinent, right? Nope. It was about how to know you are ready for sex. Abby Johnson further warns the public that most of Planned Parenthood's adolescent health material is sponsored by the Girl Scouts of the United States. It has their logo on it. Girl Scouts can receive a badge for work at Planned Parenthood. Girl Scouts subscribe to Planned Parenthood's health education curriculum. The Girl Scouts are directly affiliated with Planned Parenthood, our country's largest abortion provider, regardless of what their website falsely claims. International Connections According to International Planned Parenthood Federation, the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts and International Planned Parenthood have a close partnership. Girl Scouts of the USA states that every member of the Girl Scouts is automatically a member of WAGS, supports them in name and financially. National Connections The Girl Scouts badge entitled On Your Own refers girls directly to Planned Parenthood's website, citing the resource as a helpful link. This badge was promoted on the official Girl Scouts of the United States website for girls called Studio 2B. Local Council Connections Every local Girl Scout Council in the United States promotes, uses, and sells the official Girl Scout of the United States curriculum called Journeys. These Girl Scouts of the USA materials refer girls to abortion rights advocacy groups and role models who endorse Planned Parenthood. A substantial number of Girl Scout councils have admitted a partnership with Planned Parenthood. In addition to each council promoting abortion rights advocacy groups through the official Girl Scouts curriculum, many individual Girl Scout councils are connected to Planned Parenthood. Why is it so concerning that the Girl Scouts organization is exposing girls to Planned Parenthood? Planned Parenthood teaches promiscuity and sexual deviance to children, promotes birth control and abortions. Their literature explains how to find a clinic that does not require parental consent. Planned Parenthood holds sex education events for youth, and Planned Parenthood has distributed educational material considered by many groups to be pornographic to kids as young as 10 years old. In 2004, at a Girl Scout conference co-sponsored by Planned Parenthood, the Girl Scouts handed out a book to 700 grade school girls with the title, It's Perfectly Normal, a guide that had cartoon-like yet anatomically accurate illustrations of sexual relations, promoting masturbation and homosexuality, sexual exploration, and how to use contraception, specifically showing children how to put on condoms. It also listed the top 10 reasons for having an abortion. This book was challenged by so many schools and public libraries that it was America Library Association's most challenged book of 2005. The book is an act of encouragement for children to begin to desire sexual gratification, and it is a clear example of child pornography. There is no right or wrong way to have sex. Just have fun, explore, and be yourself. Yes, you did just hear that. The intended audience is girls ages 8 to 16. This is the message that the Girl Scouts is teaching girls, teaching our daughters. This example of explicit sex education promoted by Girl Scouts USA is found in the brochures produced by Planned Parenthood entitled Healthy, Happy, and Hot. This brochure was distributed to thousands and thousands of Girl Scouts at a panel sponsored by the Girl Scouts of the USA at the United Nations Commission in March of 2010. Among other things, this pamphlet explained to the girls, Some people have sex when they are drinking alcohol or using drugs. That is your choice. If you want to have sex and think you might get drunk or high, plan ahead by bringing condoms. It also encourages those who have HIV to live healthy, fun, happy, and sexually fulfilling lives. It supports being sexually active without telling their partners about their HIV because disclosing HIV violates their sexual and reproductive rights. Some countries have laws that say people living with HIV must tell their sexual partners about their status before having sex, even if they use condoms. These laws violate the rights of people living with HIV. When is enough going to be enough? There should be an outcry against this. These brochures are giving dangerous and incorrect information to our young girls. It is not a violation of rights to disclose HIV. It is a criminal act to withhold that information. Adolescent girls need to be protected from this impurity and not indoctrinated with it. In May of 2013, WAG sent a delegate of girls to a conference hosted by Women Deliver, a global advocacy group that promotes reproductive health, specifically abortion and contraception access for all. This conference included presentations by Dr. Leroy Carhart, a prominent late-term abortionist, Peter Singer, an infant side advocate, and Planned Parenthood CEO Cecile Richards, among other abortion advocates. 
In May of 2017, the Archdiocese of Kansas City cut ties with the Girl Scouts over troubling trends, such as their affiliation with WAGs and Planned Parenthood. The Girl Scouts donate over $1 million a year to WAGs, an organization that provides support and funds abortions for girls around the world. Transgender Inclusion Policy And God created man to his own image. To the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 Some truths mean absolutely nothing when battling against today's morally confused society. The dictionary defines male as being of or relating to or being the sex that has organs to produce sperm for fertilizing ova. A secondary definition of male says masculine. Apparently, in the more intellectually advanced times of today, gender is based more on feelings and decisions rather than an arbitrary entity like anatomy or the science of biology. There is a moral as well as a physical order to the universe. It is inscribed in all creation. Catholic teaching clearly embraces an objective moral order, and living by this is the way of to humanity flourishing. The truth is clear. Human beings are created. We are created in God's image, and we are created male and female. In October of 2011, Bobby Montoya, a seven-year-old boy who has dressed as a female since age two, asked to join the local Girl Scouts in Colorado. At first, they rejected Bobby. The mother called a press conference in order to let the world know how her son was discriminated. The Girl Scouts of Colorado responded to the protests of the LGBT right activists by changing their decision and giving a press release that stated, If a child identifies as a girl and the child's family presents her as a girl, Girl Scouts of Colorado welcomes her as a Girl Scout. The statement continued, in this case, an associate delivering our program was not aware of our approach. She contacted her supervisor, who immediately began working with the family to get the child involved and supported in Girl Scouts. We are accelerating our support systems and training so that we're better able to serve all girls, families, and volunteers. The mindset in our society and in the Girl Scouts is abundantly clear. Gender is now a personal choice. The Girl Scout website boasts, Girl Scouts is proud to be the premier leadership organization for girls in the country. Placement of transgender youth is handled on a case-by-case basis, and the welfare and best interests of the child and the members of the troop or group in question are top priority. That said, if the child is recognized by the family and school or community as a girl and lives culturally as a girl, then Girl Scouts is an organization that can serve her in a setting that is both emotionally and physically safe. A Girl Scout spokeswoman, Rachelle Trujillo, says transgender boys are already scouting with girls and other troops in America. Transgender children are currently serving in Girl Scout troops in the United States. Trujillo said, although she declined to give details, there are other councils that have transgender girls. Remember, these girls are boys. And it's working out fine, she said. Our society, unfortunately, operates on the assumption that we are not created but are simply cosmic accidents, that male and female are social perceptions that can be discarded at one's will. Our modern society believes they are themselves God, believing that they can decide what is right and wrong, whether or not we are male or female. Children are choosing to live transgendered or are being raised by their parents as gender nonconformists. Being male or being female is willed by God. For us to desire to be the opposite sex from which we were created is to make ourselves a god. God does not make mistakes. We are born as he wills it. Certainly having these feelings of being internally the opposite sex is a heavy cross. When one recognizes how loving God is and how our existence is solely for loving and serving him, one can offer this cross of remaining the sex God made you to the Lord and live united to his sufferings on the cross for us. To understand this takes great humility and trust in God. As Catholics, we must have charity and pray for those struggling with these issues, that they may be open to the truths of God and His graces. Many families decided to abandon the Girl Scouts due to the policy of allowing boys to join the Girl Scouts if they culturally lived as girls, a necessary and brave move on their part. Leaving our children in this organization will cause them to be confronted with this liberal way of thinking regarding gender and sexuality. Journeys, a brief overview.
In 2010, the Girl Scouts merchandise brought in revenue of $17,003,000. Parents have spent all of this money on books that promote abortion rights, contraception, comprehensive sex education, rape, prostitution, and sex work, while providing little to no resources for the pro-life position, purity, or abstinence. The current Journey series being used now by girls and sold both in council, bookstores, and on the Girl Scouts of the United States website leads the girls down a path of moral relativism toward the new age. There's a great emphasis on women's issues, environmental issues, empowerment, and the new globalism, but no mention of God and very little of country. In Amaze, The Twists and Turns of Getting Along, girls from the 4th to 5th grade will read a quote from Buddha and be encouraged to explore mazes and stone or dirt labyrinths. To cope with bullying, girls as young as 11 are encouraged to take a peace break, make a Zen garden, take martial arts, or do yoga with sun salutation poses. On page 50 of Amaze, the manual headlines Josefina Lopez, a playwright, and her play called Simply Maria, or The American Dream. This play mocks motherhood, childbirth, purity, marriage, and the Catholic Church. The Girl Scout manual encourages girls to write about any social issues they feel are appalling, as Josefina did. Writing provokes change. Josefina's play portrays the Catholic faith as demeaning to women. She describes the sacrament of marriage as an oppressive union where a husband puts a dog collar symbolizing a wedding band around his wife's neck and leads her out of the church as the priest tells the husband to go and pet his wife. To the wedding vows is added, serve, cook for, clean for, sacrifice for, have his children, keep his house clean even if he beats you, commits adultery, gets drunk, rapes you, lawfully denies your identity and money, and in return ask for nothing. The wife is led out of the church for the husband to sexually use and abuse her as he desires, while she must obey him, give birth to millions of children. In one scene, three daughters are named sacrifice, self-denial, and obligation, while accepting his constant affairs with other women. This play is downright blasphemous to the Catholic Church and to the sacrament of marriage in its depiction of the wedding ceremony, priest, husband, and women in their role of wife and mother, it is inappropriate for girls of any age, much less 4th to 5th graders. In Girltopia, the next age group for teens in the ninth and 10th grades, girls are taught about wage disparities between the sexes and a lack of assets and senior management positions held by women. On page 10, Girl Scouts USA promotes Rocky Mountain Planned Parenthood director Sherry S. Tepper and her book, The Gate to Women's Country. This book has been labeled as feminist porn. It describes a world set 300 years into the future after a catastrophic war which has fractured the United States into several nations. The women have also developed a matriarchy where women and children live within the town walls, in women's country, with a small number of male servants, and most of the men live outside the town in warrior camps. In Tepper's story, the women kick the men out of the community unless they are willing to remain as servants. They do see the men twice a year for a carnival, where... Women are encouraged to have sex with the warrior men to satiate them and or to procreate. Women use the men only for sex, babies, and servants. The book is full of foul language, four-letter words used not as a curse word but as a vulgar verb, and other inappropriate language and content. Is this what we want to teach our girls? What about the dignity of marriage and the vital role men play as husbands and fathers and the importance of the family unit? When teens reach their junior and senior years in high school, they begin a Girl Scouts curriculum called Your Voice, Your World, The Power of Advocacy. It encourages young women to begin to raise their voices as advocates and follow the example of other young people who are speaking out on causes such as global warming, universal health care, racism, and child poverty. Readers will find very few men in the book, with the exception of a brief mention of Kofi Annan, former Secretary General of the United Nations. Men are not seen favorably, but rather a force to diminish and avoid. Girls are encouraged to read the bottom of each page to discover a voice for good, or female advocates who are meant to be role models. Of more than 50 women listed, only three are women who are known for their faith. Their religions are only briefly mentioned, if at all. The rest are radical feminists, lesbians, existentialists, communists, or Marxists. These are not women we want held up as role models for our daughters. Yet these are the women whose lives and works are chosen by Girl Scouts to inspire and motivate our young girls to become advocates. Advocates of what? Abortion, homosexual rights, male bashing, and liberal feminism? Is this the vision you have for your little daughter's mission in life? Where do we go from here? This is not the Girl Scouts of your mothers and grandmothers. Sad but true.
Can faithful Catholics continue to ignore what is happening in Girl Scouts simply because an individual troop does not reflect the immoral shift occurring from the top down? No. Or perhaps you really enjoy a box of Thin Mints or Tagalongs. No cookie is good enough to deny your Catholic faith and to lose your soul. Catholics would have to categorically deny the teachings of the Church on premarital sex, marriage, abortion, euthanasia, and various other moral teachings. Signing your daughters up for Girl Scouts is literally putting your daughters on a road toward hell. Parents must keep their children from all danger of life and protect them from all possible harm and death. Girl Scouts USA promotes a dangerous anti-life and anti-family agenda. Girl Scouts USA have both responsibility and capability to see supporting and change their policies and practices. Until this happens, all Catholics must boycott their products, advise all families and booths that sell the Girl Scout cookies why you're not buying them, strongly urge your friends, families, and co-workers to boycott as well. This boycott must continue to grow in order to let the Girl Scouts of the United States know that you do not agree with their modern agenda. As a direct commitment, action, and prayers of pro-family people, at least 281 corporations have stopped funding Planned Parenthood. It is estimated that the boycott has cost Planned Parenthood more than $40 million since the corporate funding project began. This should serve as a testament to those who think it is impossible to change corporate behavior. Parents, do your part today in preserving the purity and character of the future generations of women, for you will need to make an account of it on your judgment day. Better options exist for our young Catholic girls. Launch a Little Flowers Girl Club in your parish. Do you want your daughters to learn about the beauty of chastity, authentic femininity, and the sanctity of life? Sadly, we can see that these topics are no longer addressed by secular girls' clubs. If we want our daughters to become strong women, we must measure strength by Catholic measures, not by secular society. You cannot in good conscience support the Girl Scouts of the United States and must educate other families to the dangers of Girl Scouts USA's policies that harm the well-being and moral development of our daughters. Girl Scouts simply isn't the organization it once was, and it is no longer compatible with the Catholic faith.